This is a video about Adobe Speedgrade CS6 looks. This is actually what's front and center of the product, so let's have a closer look at what you can do with the looks in the application. So I've got a project loaded here, and it's sort of flat right now, so it's, it's shot correctly and everything's great, but nothing has been done yet to make it look distinct. So one of the things you can do pretty much right away is actually turn to the presets that are shipped with the application. So, and then just really simply click on it. And once you're in that mode, you can just use the arrow keys to go to the next one in the list, and then yet another one. We just go through and see if it's taking you a direction that you like. It's not meant to do the grading for you. It's really just giving you ideas as to what you can do in terms of just the general creative input. And we've got other ones here, for example, if I want to see what I can do with just looks that are desaturating the picture in different ways. This one is actually depending on what I need to do with the material. Certainly an interesting one, the desaturation mix I like a lot. I've got stylized ones like Take Me Back to the 60s. That's pretty much the same thing, but a bit more washed out. And I think it pretty much immediately reminds you of some stuff that's been shot on film at that time. Uh, here's a Technicolor 3 strip, which, you know, might look awkward to you, but depending on what you need to express with the picture, if he's not feeding so well in a second from now, that might be something you're going for. And then finally, there are a couple of nice ones that just quickly let you experience what's happening if you change the overall temperature, or just specific temperature to mid-tones or just to the shadows, just giving you a general direction if this is making sense in terms of developing the picture. It's really, think of it as developing the picture and then you're gonna refine it and do the actual grade. So if you like either one of them, and I think I kind of like the idea of going with the 60s look here, then you can take it to the next level. So I'm just quickly going to hit enter to confirm that this is now applied to the shot in the timeline. You can always use zero on the numpad to go back and forth to see what it looked like before. And then if you turn over here to the left where we have the layer stack of the application, you can also immediately work with the influence slider to change the opacity of each layer. So this most importantly has just this effects filter put on top of the layer stack. And um, the preset is already toned down to 70% or 0.7 in opacity. And I'll just quickly bring that further up. I'll go further down and see if I like it better, if that particular effect is going to see more impact. I'm going to actually go for a bit more because I like it better. And then you can look at the picture like, what else do I need to do to refine this? So most importantly, I can turn to my primary layer and just take care of getting the blacks to where I need it to be, whatever production setting for me as a standard or what I need to have with the shot creatively I can do. So I'm gonna make it a bit more punchy, just build some more contrast, gonna add a bit more light to it. Now what I'd like here is to actually refocus the attention and just really make sure that we're just looking at him right away once this picture is coming up. Right now, that's not necessarily the case, so let's use a classic technique for that. I'm gonna turn into the mask section of the application, it's really right next to the look tab, and click on one of our presets. In this case, I'm gonna add a vignette. And we got this nice tool here that allows me to quickly just change either the overall size or add a bit more feathering. And you've got tools to fine tune that. If you prefer a specific kind of preset for doing the feathering, you can certainly go into this list. I'm gonna go for smooth as I tend to like that best for just a classic vignette. And I'm also not gonna use a vignette like it comes with a preset. I'm actually gonna stretch it out so really center it around him and try to bring more attention to the guy in the picture. So here it is. I'm gonna add another primary. And in this section that says mask and alpha, the first three are about the mask. And if I do nothing, it's actually gonna apply the grade on that layer just to the overall picture. If I decide to go for inside, let's just quickly do this so you get the idea. And this is not what I want to do creatively, but you're going to see that actually the change in temperature is only happening inside the mask. If you look towards the left there, it's most prominent. It's not affecting that. So in this case, a vignette, I'll just click on outside and turn to my offset tool here and then we really just tone that down a bit more. And here's the cool thing. Once I'm there, I can obviously go back into the mask and just once the grading is on, it's actually a lot easier to say, hey, I want to put it a little bit over there or make it denser. 
really we focus a bit more so the steel to the left is not that much apparent anymore. Whatever you need to do. Also, obviously, I can add more feathering to make it go softer towards the outside. And here we are. Uh, now, as with all the tools in Layer Stack, you can always turn on and off each individual part of it. And you can see what this does to my picture. Let me quickly loop that and just play that. So it's interesting what it does. This is the or original picture, right? And this is what happened just with adding a couple of layers and just really giving it sort of a distinctive feeling that's going to express what I want this to look creatively and refocus the attention toward the guy in the center. Now, a couple of other things are worth knowing about what we do with looks in SpeedGrade CS6. For one thing, SpeedGrade is totally a workflow tool. So if you need to communicate this to somebody else you're working with, you can just easily click on Control-P and save that as a look file. So if someone else is working on that project on another workstation using SpeedGrade, you don't need to send the project. You can actually really just send that look. And also, what's really cool about it, and let me quickly do this for you, I can actually delete this timeline. Just open something else from a familiar project that's from pretty much within the same realm in terms of cameras used, lighting, etc. So different style, different kind of project, but I can now come back to my look section and reuse, repurpose that very same look on that material. And Obviously, I can come back, and that's the whole purpose of making it just metadata. I can come back and say, okay, on this material, as we had a bit more contrast in the original picture, let's actually not go up with the gain that much. As I'm always presented just with the sliders in the very position I left it when I originally designed the look, it's super easy to refine that. And the same thing goes now for something like, ah, oh, wait a second, that filter was great on the other picture. It seems a little bit overdone on this one as there's more metallic surfaces in it. So I'll just bring that down. And you can see how easy it is to make these things work. Or for example, if the vignette is a little bit too much or the shape needs to change, you just come back and just make all these changes as eventually it's all just metadata. So for this kind of shot, for example, I would much prefer to have a lot more feathering. And the grading is a little bit too intense. So I'm going to come back and just really bring the offset up a little bit. So I have a really good vignette on this one. So this is without it. This is with the vignette. And this is how easily you can repurpose the looks, even on a completely different project. Now, finally, it's also super simple to export just to a lookup table. And we've got two cool things going actually within um, the Adobe realm of products. So After Effects would, without conversion, just take the look file. And you can just apply that from within the lookup table section. And uh, Photoshop would do the same thing. But you can also make this work for other products if you hover over a look, which I'm doing right here on this one. And if you click on the E button, it will actually open the export menu. And you can see this goes deep. So I can actually export to pretty much all the tools out there that would accept the 1D or 3D lookup table that are used in production. So, And the use for that could be that once you have sort of the signature look for your production, you can put it even in a hardware device and just use it for applying that on your preview monitor without ever baking it in with your actual recording. So it's a nice way of connecting the colorist with the DP with the DIT. So you got workflow instead of just saying, this is the thing that comes in at the end. And until then, people don't actually see what they're doing. So this was a quick introduction as to how to work with looks in Adobe SpeedGrade CS6.